Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey. I'm over here at the UFL gym in Shanghai, China, and I'm going to do a product review for Lieber Lupus boxing equipment. So Lieber Lupus, thanks guys. They sent me a package of boxing equipment, including some boxing gloves, some headgear, some focus mitts, some shin guards, some, what do we call these? Wrist straps, and a punching bag that I'm gonna review separately. So, let's start with the pros and the cons of each. The big pro, this stuff is cheap. It's inexpensive. And the first question on everybody's mind when it's inexpensive is, but is it any good? Is it just cheap or is it cheap garbage? Okay, now I'm all about giving honest, unbiased reviews. They are not paying me. They did send me the products, but you know, this is not a paid promotion just so you know. So when I first picked up these boxing gloves, I thought, wow, these are bright. They come in bright colors, blue, red, green, pink, yellow probably. And looks like a pretty standard set of 14 ounce boxing gloves. You know, it's got your Velcro enclosure. It's got kind of a plush grip bar, some ventilation holes. It feels pretty decent on the hand. Feels like a pretty decent boxing glove. It is artificial leather, vinyl, and it's that type of vinyl that's kind of, kind of squeaky when you rub it. So that had me a bit worried, like, oh, I don't know, this feels like it might fall apart after one use. But for the last three weeks, I've been putting this stuff through the ringer, and these boxing gloves have not only held up really well, they pleasantly surprised me. So especially for the price, these boxing gloves are a pretty good deal. They feel great doing pad work, and they feel good sparring. So whether it's a sparring glove or a bag glove, yeah, pretty decent boxing glove for the price. Now on the other end of the spectrum, the focus mitts. I was not so happy about these ones, specifically because they're really, really soft. They're squishy. And that's, that's actually good for kids' classes. So when I teach my kids' classes, yeah, I'll use the squishy focus mitts because they have soft, squishy hands. But for grown adults, not so much. If you have a squishy, really plush focus mitt, it's going to shift around a lot when you hit it. It's going to put a lot of sting on your hand and especially on the elbow. And yeah, that's going to add up. So you don't want to use these for professional fighters. You don't want to use these for grown men and women who know how to throw a decent punch. Okay, but for kids, yeah, they're squishy. Yeah, for kids' classes, sure. But, again, for grown-ups, I'll give those a pass. On to the good side once again, the wrist wraps. These ones are actually really good, especially for the price. It is a Mexican-style five-meter long wrap. So the Mexican style means it's got some elasticity to it. It's got a little bit of stretch. So what that means is that you can apply more pressure to certain areas of the hand. Now you don't want to squeeze and cut off your circulation, so make sure as you wrap up the hand, you flex that hand, right? And yeah, don't squeeze yourself to death as you're reinforcing your wrist and your metacarpals connecting your wrist to the knuckles, okay? Yeah, these pretty good, pretty decent wrist wraps. Okay. Next we have the cloth pull-on style shin guards. Now I know a lot of people hate these and they'll just throw them out right away and say, cloth shin guards, that sucks. And if you're doing stand-up sparring, Muay Thai sparring, kickboxing sparring, with any level of power behind it, yeah, I completely understand that and I'm on board with it. Get those heavy, thick ones, okay? However, for MMA sparring, you can't wear those heavy, thick ones. You can try, but they will get in the way of grappling. These ones will not. You can wear these thin, sock-like pull-on ones when you grapple. So for MMA sparring, yeah, these ones are actually pretty decent. They do have an elastic strap at the top, that fastens with Velcro to keep it from sliding down your leg. 
as you spar. So that's pretty decent. My only recommendation is anything with Velcro on it when you're sparring, tape that up. Get some sports tape and tape a band of that tape over the top. That includes gloves. And here's why. Because Velcro, first of all, that'll start scratching up your skin, germs will get in there, and cause mad-born illnesses. You do not want a staph infection. That's the last thing you want. You don't want ringworm. You don't want any of these mad-born illnesses that can get into cuts and scrapes. And the secondary reason, or maybe it's your primary reason, is you don't want your rash guard or, or your spats to get snagged on Velcro, because Velcro is the worst enemy of spandex. So keep the Velcro away from the Lycra. Okay, so if you have a rash guard that you like, or spats, or shorts, or whatever it is, and your training partners have something with Velcro on, get out a roll of sports tape and wrap that up. So as long as you tape that up, yeah, pretty decent for MMA sparring. And last on the list is the headgear. Now I have some mixed feelings about headgear. I made a whole video about that, what it actually does and what it doesn't do, okay? Headgear does not make your brain impenetrable, okay? It does not stop your brain from shaking around inside your skull. The primary purpose of headgear is to protect the outside of the head, to protect the soft parts of your face, to prevent cuts, abrasions, bruises, black eyes, bleeding, that kind of thing. So this is a lightweight set of headgear. And when I see lightweight headgear, I'm always worried that it's going to be plush like these uh, focus mitts, but it's not. It's actually very stiff, which is what you want in a lightweight headgear. Now some headgear like Twins, Fairtex, they make some really heavy headgear that weighs almost like two kilos and it feels like a full-on helmet. And the lightweight headgear, if I do wear headgear, that's what I prefer because it's, it's more like wearing nothing. So it doesn't weigh the head down and you don't have to change your movement style a whole lot. Okay? Now, this has a Velcro enclosure at the back. It does not have laces to adjust it up at the top. You'll notice the face pinches in. I'll put this on. And you'll notice this is going to change the way I talk a little bit because it's squishing me over the mouth. It's very snug right here, and it should be snug. So that's actually a pro that it pinches in, kind of squishes your cheeks a little bit, makes you talk funny. Okay? Because again, you do want that headgear to be snug. Some people might think, oh, but my nose is poking out. And I'm going to tell you, it's not the headgear's responsibility to protect your nose. Because if you're getting punched in the nose, it's because your boxing form is bad. Quick review of how to not get punched in the nose. So here I am from a side, profile view, right over here. Light's probably better there, right? And if my head is up, you know, like a normal everyday life, like I'm having a conversation so with someone, my posture is upright, and a punch comes in, boom, boom. The first thing it comes in contact with is your nose, the most prominent forward feature on the human face. So what do I do instead? I will tilt my head forward. Some people say, tuck the chin. I don't give that cue because when I do, people press their chin down into their neck and they cut off they're breathing, and it ruins a lot of, a lot of uh, good habits, and it creates bad ones. So we tilt the forehead forward. Notice I can still talk. My voice didn't change. I can breathe perfectly, but one simple thing happened. Now the most prominent feature on my head is my forehead and not my nose, the hardest structure on the body. So use good position to protect yourself. Don't rely on headgear. Again, this is to prevent cuts abrasions, and bruising to the outside of the head, okay? And again, don't rely on this. It's not a replacement for good form. It is not a replacement for intelligently defending yourself at all times. It is not a replacement for a mouth guard. So make sure you have all of those things, okay, before you even think about headgear. What headgear is good for, what I use it for, is when sparring with elbows. 
Now, when sparring with elbows, I always go light, but yeah, elbows, even light contact, can cut you up very easily. So if I do spar with elbows, headgear, and whenever possible, elbow pads. Man, I got some mutant hooks on the end of these elbows. Those things are nasty, man. You know, some people who don't even know how to, how to throw a proper punch have crazy hooks on the end of their elbows, and they can, they can cut you up very easily. So, the headgear, uh, pretty decent headgear, especially for the price, again. The stuff, like I said, is, is on the lower end of the price tag, so if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want a decent set of light headgear, there you go. Decent set of gloves, there you go. Pretty dang good pair of wraps, there you go. And yeah, that's the Lieber Lupus equipment review. So thanks to Lieber Lupus for sending that to me. Their products are available on Amazon.com. The links are in the descriptions down below along with some discount codes. So if you want some discounts on this stuff, which is already on the lower end of the price tag, yeah, check it out. Hey, thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.